Imagine having the most powerful ability in the school. Being skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat, being strong enough to take down any opponent imaginable. To be literally the king of your school. Yet you don't. Yet you hold back. You pretend to be the weakest one in the world. Why is that? Why would you take beatdowns and bullies when you could easily defeat them all? Let's find out. A little bit ago, a couple weeks ago at this point, I talked about the control C power, i.e. the ability to copy and or mirror other people's abilities. It's a fun and often overpowered ability, and it's great to see our main characters wreck their opponents. To many authors, it's the perfect way to keep the interest on the main character. No matter the new ability with the new character introduced, the main character will always have the spotlight. And to the readers, i.e. you guys, it's a fun but maybe a little cliched ability. As I mentioned in that video, there are many series that have that power, and even more that I did not get to, because while I read a lot, I cannot read them all. But I started checking out a couple because of you. Uh, most notably Nano Machines, which is a really cool one so far. But the culmination of this concept is Unordinary's John Doe. Just as a quick refresher, the world of Unordinary is defined by two things, abilities and strength. Basically your power, how strong your abilities are. And we get to see that throughout the series, as the people in charge are the people who are strong enough to beat others down. From energy blasts to lightning, time manipulation, energy whips, whatever the heck Aizen has. So of course we follow John Doe the weakest member of the school, or as the series defines it, a cripple. Someone without powers. However, there is an asterisk to that, that being a self-imposed cripple status. You see, John has powers, the control C powers that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, that being aura manipulation, having the ability to mirror and amplify other people's abilities, basically being able to use a stronger version of practically anyone's ability. And with a mastery over hand-to-hand -hand combat, John wouldn't just be a force to be reckoned with, he would be an absolute beast, easily being unbeatable in the right state of mind. So why? Why does John not? Why does he choose to get beaten down all the time? Why doesn't he use his overpowered ability? I know I would show it off all the time. Well, the right state of mind is the important part of that statement. Because John isn't. The best part of this series isn't just the cool abilities and the cool fight scenes or the overpowered ability, but the relationship between John and his power. Now, I've talked a lot about John. Some might say too many times, which I can't blame them for that. And while there has been a lot of progress with John, especially since my last video, this video isn't what that's about. Because today we're examining the relationship between John and his ability. Like I said, if I lived in this world and I had this power, I would be quick to show it off. Not only because it would save me from the constant bullying that weaker students have to endure, but also because it's sick! It's so cool! Look at the black effects with the cool moves, the orange highlights, the mirror, it's just, ah, great. <laughs> the, the point is that with a cool power like that, I would be more than glad to use it. But John doesn't. He actively chooses against it, actively chooses to be beaten down, and the reason is just as interesting as the power, if not more. It's because John is afraid. Afraid of what his power has caused and afraid of what his power might cause. John has a past in which he actually was a crippled. There was a time where he didn't have an ability. Maybe because it was so complicated to use, or maybe because he just was a late bloomer, or you know, some other fan theory in which they kind of got, gave him power. Whatever the case might have been, there was a time where John didn't have a power. But that changed when he gained his new power. And as time progressed, he became stronger and stronger eventually becoming strong enough to be the king of his previous school, 
but that's also where the problems arise. As one of his best friends gathered basically the entire school to fight against the person that John became. And it worked. Well, kinda. If they wanted to teach John a lesson, I'm not sure that really panned out. But the fight caused John to get expelled, causing him to enter and endure these readjustment classes. Brutal classes in which they make him relive his past mistakes and trauma over and over and over again. Seeing him hurt his friends, push away the only people who cared about him. Until he breaks. John, after this point, is afraid of his powers and afraid of himself. He wishes for nothing but for his powers to be gone. He wants to be powerless. He wants others to be in charge because he does not trust himself. I mentioned that one of the best parts of this series is John's relationship with his power. With a lot of other series with this type of power, the main appeal is how they can copy other people's powers. However, Unordinary is slightly different. You see, it's a build up to get to the point to see John use his powers. And it's a struggle to see him use it. Because everyone knows that John has something special, something hidden. The entire build up is us aware that John could easily win against anyone in the school, but he decides decides not to. He actively chooses to get beaten up. And the build up to him eventually letting everything loose makes it all the more interesting because it's both satisfying and also really worrying. There was a reason that John kept it hidden. Here John breaks down. He loses himself. He forgets to hold back and he forgets about the fear that's been keeping him contained. As I mentioned, his relationship with his ability is one of the highlights of the series. Abilities in this series are important. They're how people define themselves. It's a basis of your social standing. The weak stand with the weak at the bottom. The strong will fight amongst themselves to see who's the strongest and who deserves to be at the top. Hope you can hear the air quotes with that one. With many other series, we see them use their ability right off the bat, as soon as they can. This makes sense. For many other series, that's the appeal. Being able to steal, mirror, copy, whatever, whatever. The point is that the copy ability is pretty ingrained in their series. But our ordinary is different. We spend like 50 episodes waiting for John to use his ability. Another 20 before he uses it again, and he uses it sparsely throughout the entire series until his Joker arc. John deciding to not use his ability means he forfeits his social standing, his power, his authority, because he's more afraid of his ability than he is of getting beaten down and broken. However, after Arlo betrays him, it changes. He's no longer afraid of using his strength, but there's still something holding him back. He still plays pretend. He still plays the cripple, only slightly ordering Arlo and Elena around. That is until his best friend loses her ability and starts to get bullied herself. His fear is placed aside, deciding to tear through the hierarchy for his friend because he wanted to send a message, a message of fear and despair to everyone. The same fear and despair he's felt his whole life. No one is safe, no matter how strong or capable they are. The power to take over the school, and he only decides to use it to show how broken the school was. Deciding to fight back when his friend was in need, but that's also part of the problem. As John was brewing this entire time, he never forgave anyone for what they've done. He's held on to every fight, every beatdown, every time he's been sent to the infirmary. John was angry, understandably so. We see even a conversation, which was more of a one-sided debate against Remy, that his entire life was often a living hell, facing off against powerful opponents for often no reason, unsure which day he would be sent home in bandages, often not even knowing who or why someone was beating him up. This reflects when John became the Joker. As his opponents are fighting an enemy, they don't know. Fighting an enemy that's confirmed to be stronger than them for what feels like no reason. And as the series continues, John's anger gets the best of him. As his powers he once feared once again take over his life. Take control of who he is. It's a bittersweet tale as we all wanted this for John. We wanted to see John tear through everyone. Destroy the hierarchy with his own two hands to finally see John use his powers to fight back. But when he does, 
we lose the John that we fell in love with. Like I said before, this isn't a video talking about everything John has done or will become. I'm planning that video for later when I have something that I need. Instead, with an ordinary on a break and a weird TikTok filter coming out apparently, I wanted to talk about the importance of John's powers and more importantly, the relationship he has with them. It's an aspect that I didn't really cover in this video, but I'll be honest, a lot of series don't really often cover them themselves. Off the top of my head, I think only I Get Stronger The More I Eat really delves into the relationship between power and person. And it's a series I should definitely talk about soon, maybe for Halloween. But the point is that John's relationship with his ability really defines the entirety of the series. John's fear over using something that's caused him and a lot of people he's cared about a lot of pain, which then turned into a dependency on it, pretending to still be the person he was before, but he can't be. No matter how much he hates it, he relies on his power to make him stronger, to make his words matter, to make him important enough to give back the pain and suffering that others have caused onto him and his best friend to finally confusion over who he is, over what kind of person he would be if he didn't use his powers for good. With great power comes great responsibility. It's a quote, you might have heard of it, it's from a pretty popular series, and I love this quote. But Spider-Man only uses one side to this, the heroic side, that you can't just sit on the sidelines and pretend nothing can happen if you have the ability to save people. An ordinary takes it in a different direction. John has great power, but that great power has also caused even greater problems. Afraid that his powers are just a curse, feeling that someone else should step up and lead. But we don't get to choose who we are in life, all we get to choose is what we do. I love Unordinary, and like I said, I plan on making a much longer and much more in-depth video specifically on John in the near future, hopefully. So if you have any thoughts or any questions about our favorite angry boy, leave them in the comments below. And like always, thank you for watching. Take care.